All right, move to this side, please. Sorry, on the other, not on the other side. Move on this tiny room on this side. On the other side. Of It's so easy to relate to your mind. I think the motion that I like to use because it helped me, maybe it'll help you. You have a driver's license. Most guys have a driver's license, right? Imagine that two weeks from Monday, you have to go to court. And you, you, you weren't such a great driver. The judge. Imagine you have to go to court, and all you going to court for is you're going to plead with the judge. He wants to suspend your license for six months, for a year, whatever, because you, 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 you messed up a few times. And you got to go to court to, to plead for your license. Imagine what you'll be doing now. You want to lose your license for a year or six months. You, you, you want to lose your license. So you, 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 what can I do? All right? What's the big deal? It's a driver's license. But what about the drive? I can't drive, does it's not what you be worrying about. The Yom Adin Chazal tell us, it's a, you know, the problem with the Yom Adin is we have it every year, but it's a real serious thing. And if you know anybody who, who passed away this past year, it was Nigzer Rosh Hashanah, that he should pass away. And if you know anybody who made money, or lost money, or got really sick, it was Nigzer Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, the whole year is Nigzer. Whether you're going to be healthy, whether you're, whether you're going to live, whether you're going to be sick, whether you're going to break your leg, it's all Nigzer Rosh Hashanah. So at least we should be feeling a little bit of apprehension that Hashem is going to pull out our book, our record book, and he's going to think to himself, what should I do for this guy? How did he act this past year? And what does he deserve in the next year? And even though we've been through, we've been through this a few times in our lives, things can change very drastically. And uh, we know, Chas Shalom, people our age who got very sick, especially my age, but older, and people who, got, who passed away, and people who lost fortunes of money, and people made fortunes of money, and uh, realize that it's all coming up for judgment two weeks from Monday. So it's something you should think about in the back of our minds, in front of our minds. The very interesting mitzvah, the first mitzvah of the parasha, Isha, Isha Siyaf of Yom Astor, a very strange mitzvah. You know, the Torah, the whole Torah is about how holy we can be. And here's a mitzvah that you, uh, I mean, we, Today there's no real hand-to-hand combat anymore, but those days of hand-to-hand combat, you saw a beautiful woman, you used to take her, that was, that was done in war. But for Klai Yisrael to do it, it's a very strange thing. Take a woman, you see in war, and Tazal, whatever it is, you take her. Rashi says, take her as a wife. Very interesting Rashi. The only reason the Torah said this mitzvah, because of the eight, because of the eight Sahara. Shema ain't a Kodesh Baruch Hu Matir Yisena B'Yisr. If Hashem wouldn't let you marry her in a permitted way, there's all kinds of halachas, you learn the rest of the parasha. In a permitted way, you take her B'Yisr. Okay? And then it just goes on to say, if you're going to end up marrying her, you're going to end up hating her, and you're going to have a Benzer Amor, the rest of the parashas follow. In other words, it's, never going to, it's not going to be the greatest shidduch in the world. But Torah matters it, because the Torah has to matter it. If it wouldn't matter it, you would do it anyway. So, uh, Mr. Isaac Sher, Mr. Isaac Sher was the Rosh Hashiva of Slobodka in the Brak, the son, it was the son-in-law of the author of Slobodka. He said, you see an interesting thing here. What does it mean that the Torah wouldn't be matri? It means any mitzvah, there's no such thing as a mitzvah that's beyond us. Here he says, yeah, for his Torah, you know, you think that um, if Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, Rabbi the Asher of Zatzal, would have gone to war, they would have needed the Yeh for his Torah. I mean, it would, it would apply to them. But the Torah says, oh, for since some people in Klein Israel could not withstand it, you have to be mutter. That's me mutter. There's no such thing as anything in the Torah that's too hard for us. You know, we think to ourselves, what do you mean? There's so much expected of me. The Torah wouldn't demand it if it would be out of our league. If we couldn't do it, the Torah would never demand it. You have to, that's, that's, what, that's what this myth is teaching us. The Torah gives us exactly what we need. You know, I have to wake up every day for dominating, really. Whatever it is, whatever we're expected to do, it's within our, our, our capabilities of doing. 
Obviously, sometimes you have to build up to it, but uh, we can do everything. I mentioned Shabbos, and I mentioned many times until, until Yom Kippur, that uh, one of the things we should be doing now, in the remaining days, to Yom Kippur, we should find something, something, to say, you know, Bereshon, I mean business. I'll prove, to, I'll prove to myself and to you that I mean business by accepting something upon myself that I'm going to do, I'm going to do to Yom Kippur. This shows us, this shows Hashem, it shows ourselves that I really mean business. I mean, if I just say I'll be good, okay, I'll be good. But if I pick something that won't be that easy, not that hard, and I'll be able to do to Yom Kippur, it means I did something. And I mentioned Shabbos also, if, if, you, if you're facing this direction, you want to go there, you'll never get there. But as soon as you turn around and you face the right direction, at least you're on the way. You pick something, each one of us, you pick something, that I'll do to Yom Kippur. Remember last year I suggested to a guy, Okay, well, I don't know what you're just talking about, but okay, so you're right. You know, he didn't like, he didn't like the word tzitzis. I said, you know what? Wear tzitzis to Yom Kippur. Try to Yom Kippur. Okay, not so great. But you wear Yom Kippur. You know what? I think even today he's wearing tzitzis. Right? That's that. You know, try to Yom Kippur. Whatever it might be, it's hard for me to get up for shoppers. But you know what? I'll get up to Yom Kippur. Obviously, in two weeks it's going to be a little harder because we're going to have sleeves a week and a half. Have sleeves. And I always say, you know, that, you know what Shlita shows us? N- n- none of us, including especially myself, and probably some of you, none of us have that much kabbalah when we say slichas. We don't know what the words mean. We don't understand the whole concept. But it shows ourselves, it shows me, Shalom, you know what? For, for, for a couple of days, I'm going to get out of bed earlier, earlier than normal. It's going to be hard for me. I'm going to sit and, and dive with you an extra half hour every day. An extra half hour every day. It's going to be easy, but I'm going to do it. It shows that I really mean business. And part of our job in the remaining days of this year and before in Kibber is to show everybody that we really mean business. And we pick different things. I said, pick something that you'll be able to do to in Kibber. And it was some people, something will be harder. And I mentioned somebody last year, so I said the words, it's to Kibber. For another guy, is not to miss davening. For another guy, is not to miss film. For another guy, is, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Learn for next a few minutes, whatever it might be. You know, every, everybody has their own cheshbonis. The famous story of the Vilna Gleim. He passed away in Chalam Sukkis. And they found his notebook with the averis he did for the year. So I think it said in the notebook it was five minutes of the Torah. Okay? So for the Vilna Gleim, that was his, that was his averis that he did the whole year, five minutes of the Torah. Uh, our averis is five minutes every 15 minutes. But okay, so that's... A, but you know what? If we cut down on the five minutes every 15 minutes, I learned for 15 minutes instead of learning for 10 minutes, that's a, that's a madrega. Everyone, let's pick something that we can do a little extra. Show ourselves, show everybody, Shalom, that I really mean business. <coughs> that makes a whole difference. That makes a whole difference. I mentioned three things. I said, one thing we should pick now, Kalim Kippur. When it gets to Rosh Hashanah, we should do something a little more difficult, Kalim Kippur. And we should pick something now, very, very, very small, that we're going to do forever. And I told you, Rabbi Gamil said, said to us, said to me, that if you do that, pick something very small, but you always do it, it reminds you once had this experience they went through Yom Kippur and, and it helps. So again, the Torah there's nothing there's nothing that's, that 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 the Torah asks of you, and certainly not what Yeshiva or David asks of you. That's beyond anybody. It looks hard. It may be hard, but it can do it. And but but we have to decide we want to do it. It has to be important enough for us to do it. There's another mitzvah of of, of Ben Sorimor, which is a very strange mitzvah. The truth is, as I'll tell us. Ben Sarvamar Lo Hai Vilo Nivro. Never really existed in Ben Sarvamar. But it's an interesting halacha. And uh, I'll read you read Ramban. The Ramban says, Hine Yesha Lav Shnei Onshin. He has two punishments. Arashu Mekala Ovi Vimo, Umamra. Well, he really, he, he, he doesn't really curse them, but he, but he disdains his father and mother, and he rebels against them. Vashenishu Shu Solo Vasove. He's a glutton, he's gluttonous. Over al mashin yitzavu kedoshim to you. It's interesting. You know what he violates? He violates the mitzvah called kedoshim to you. If you remember the Ramban in the parish of kedoshim says, "What's kedoshim to you?" He says, "Kedoshim to you is is an extra mitzvah because it's a concept of novel b'shus haTorah. Be a novel, be a disgusting person. We never violate any Torah laws. You can, you can, you can be a glutton, you can be a drunk, you can be a, everything, right? But uh, it's a mitzvah kedoshim to you. What the Ben Sarimor did, he violated kedoshim to you." He you know what? He, there's a mitzvah to be, connect to Hashem and to serve Hashem, right? 
We have to know Hashem in all our ways. But if you're if you're a drunkard and a and a and a and a and a, and a, and a glutton, lo you lo you Hashem. You don't know Derech Hashem. Ala klal. Ain lo wat chet mavis. He doesn't really deserve misa for this, but he's going to end up being somebody who deserves misa. So the Rabban said two things. Two things that he didn't do. He says he's punished because he's not kedoshim to you. And he's punished because he didn't try to connect to Hashem. So my Shiva not telling us the question. Most of clients here all violate those two things. How many of us are really, really practice Kedoshim to you? And how many of us really try to connect to the Rishlam and to serve him? This is most of the Jew, most of the clients here even, even most of the religious clients here violates these two things. Bikash, Rabban says that's his, what's what he did. And, and, and look around the, the world. And most of us, most of us do the same thing. So he said an interesting thing. He says, you know what the problem with the with the Ben Tzar is? Not that he did it, because we all do it. Most of us violate Kedoshim to you. Most of us don't live up to Kedoshim to you. Most of us violate that we don't try our best to connect to Hashem. But the Ben Tzar his Avera, was he rejects it. It's not on my agenda. I don't even try. The reason that we're not Ben Tzar is because that, that's on our agenda. That's what we're going to try. We're going to try to get there. What a difference. Ben Tzar is one who rejects the possibility. So let's make sure as we approach the Yemei Adin, coming up, Mamish, very quickly upon us, say, you know, Ben Shalom, it's hard, but I'm going to try a little bit. Okay, I'm, I don't know about you, but I, I don't think I will, I will be in Tzadik Bayam Kippur. Right? Too far for me to go. Maybe you guys are a little closer, maybe it'll be easier. But I'm too far. But let me be a little bit better. A little drop. Let me show you You know what? I don't want to be at some I don't want to be rejecting where I should be going. I want to get there. I want to, pre- I want to pray that I get there. I want you to help me get there. It's not automatic. I'll tell you another interesting thing I heard from Rabbi Amir Rabbanovich just one before. He had a kash. Chazal, Rashi says, Chazal tell us that a Ben Saramura is neither al sofa. He's judge of what is he's going to become. What is he going to turn into? I'll turn into a I'll turn into, to listen to him, I'll turn into a highway robber. So he judged on that. He had a cash. I remember back in Sefer Bereshis, we got a little late a few weeks ago, Ishmael is sent away from Avram's house, and he runs out of water, and he's suffering. And uh, Hashem says, okay, I'm going to show him where the well is. So he shows his mother where the, where the, where the stream is. 